Yes, yeah, and welcome to Vasily's Garden, folks. Guess what? It's time for time to do a summer prune on all your fruit trees. Now we're in our little courtyard here. We've got an apricot, two Asian pears, a peach, and two pear trees as well. And have a look at them. They've put on their summer growth like there's no tomorrow. It's going up to the sky, and that's the last thing I need these ones to do. So we need to do a summer prune, and now's the time to do it after the harvest. Now, if your trees are still holding fruit on them, uh, and it's going to be very late ripening, you can still do a prune on them like apples and pears, but especially the apricots, they need to be thinned out. If you remember going back a couple of years, this tree here was almost dead. We nearly lost it. Now, I did do a hard prune on it a couple of times to shape it up, gave it a feed, and I've got a big reaction from it, meaning it's come good again. Very little fruit to start with because we've got to establish the, uh, the fruit or the branches that are going to be producing fruit for us. So we've got to thin this one out as well, but I'm not going to do that one on this segment. We're going to work on this Asian pear here because it's going straight up and I don't want that to happen. So it's a summer prune and it's quite a simple one. It's all about bringing it back down to a more manageable height that you can reach to. So we're talking about all these wispy branches, cutting it back down to two or three buds above where it's growing from. Similar to what we did with our espalier, all the upright growth, we bring it right back down. I could actually bring that down a little bit further, down to there. Now we need to cut it just above a node here. See where the leaf is connecting there? We cut it on a slight angle and about half a centimetre above there. Now we do the same with all the branches. The aim here is to actually bring the tree down just below your managing height. So if your arm, like me, six and a half foot tall, is up to here, don't cut it there. You cut it down just below that reach. So wherever your arm reaches, bring it down just a little bit lower. So again, I'm gonna bring it down to here, like that. And we're gonna go around the entire plant and reduce the overall height. Now we also look for dead, diseased and damaged wood. That's a branch that's crossing over through the middle or branches that have been broken for whatever the reason or even branches that have got some signs of disease on them. Remove them now and it's the best time to do it. Now why do we do a prune in summer? Well, it's because if you do it only in winter, the tree coming springtime reacts to that prune and puts on a lot more growth. Similar to what's happened here, but I did this in early spring when it was active and I got a good reaction to it and that's it there. With the other trees like, that's the apricot we're talking about, but trees like this Asian pear here, we cut it in summer, it gives it all that six months through autumn, winter while it goes dormant to relax and react. You may get some more growth coming through after you do the prune if the weather is still quite active, high in temperatures. But that's okay because you may get a little growth like this after the prune. But what you do then is go back in winter and reduce the tree again by pruning it and clean out any parts that you miss out. And why I say that is because as we're looking at it here, you can't really see every branch where it's going because there are leaves everywhere. And a better example of this is this one here. Have a look at this pear tree here. We've got pears on it. Half of them have been eaten. And I've just come to realize because I walked out here, there's a little nest in there. Do you like that? How do you, how do you like this? We've got a nest in there and food source all the way around. It's even eaten this pear while it's relaxing there. A couple of eggs in there, so a little pest. Well, it's not a pest, it's a bird, and it's feeding off my tree. So I'm gonna class it as a pest because it's gonna eat all my pears. Pointless me trying to actually cover it because I'll be protecting the bird inside, eating all my pears. Nevertheless, when you see a branch like this or a tree like this with so many branches, it's almost virtually impossible to know which branch to cut off. So all you're doing really is bringing down the height and take out some of the branches that you can see crossing over, like this one here. See, that's crossing over to the other side, so it's going over the trunk. If you had a bird's eye view of your tree, you could see which branches are crossing from one side to the other side. You wanna take them out, and the aim by doing that is to open up and create a vase shape, an open vase shape in the middle. More air light, more sunlight, more airflow, I should say, more sunlight, and you get a better, healthier tree at the end of the day. So let's get back to this pear tree, or this Asian pear tree. When you're actually bringing it down, you're aiming to try and stop the tree from sprouting up so high. So the regular pruning of that you do by bringing it down to a certain level, for example here, so we brought it down last time to there. Now I'm going to bring it back down again further. Why I say that is because we've got these little 
spurs, well, let's call them, uh, that are growing out, out on the side there, these can eventually become fruit-bearing spurs. That's what we want to do with this branch. We don't want it constantly to suck her up like that. And if we cut it down to a good manageable height, hopefully we'll trick it into producing a flower rather than a shoot. And by doing it regularly, eventually the tree will start converting. See, we've got another spur there. Now what we're going to do with this side here is bring it back down again. So just cut it off to that level there. Don't worry that if you're cutting it too close, if you think it's too close to where it's joining, you're not going to kill it. You're going to guarantee yourself a new shoot or a flower popping up out of there. So we do the same thing all the way around, especially on the high parts. Have a look at this up here. See all these here? These are going to get cut down like this. I'm just going to do this quickly and just show what it's going to look like at the end. Really short. Like that. Sorry about the camera. We don't need that anymore, do we? We're going to cut that. There you are. We've brought it right down. We've thinned it out a little bit. It's an easy tree to manage. And that's what you want to be able to do with your tree. So there's a couple of branches in the middle here that I have crossed over. And I mentioned that earlier, don't have them, but look at the end. So we've got all this swelling going on. That's possibility of having fruit. Well, that is a possibility of having some fruit on there. Uh, we did harvest about a dozen or two off this tree. Uh, we didn't get to eat them all, unfortunately. Yeah, that's right. We've got birds and wildlife and rodents to so get out here and have a feast as well but we did enjoy some of the fruit. Now, the other thing we've got to look at is suckers from the bottom. See the colour difference there from the leaf here and there? That's the rootstock taking off. That's basically telling you that the root's trying to take off. This is what we call graft versus host rejection, which means the root's trying to take off. And if you want to make sure it's the root, look at the leaf first. And secondly, look how far out it's growing. It's not anywhere near the trunk of the tree as well. So we've got to cut all these off. Now, normally, I suggest we dig it out and get as close to the base as we can. I don't want to use my good secateurs on this. I'm going to cut it just above the soil like that for now. And then shave the rest of these off as well, off from the side of the trunk. It really does suck her up a lot here. What are you doing here, sweetheart? I love you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to talk to me? Hey, you want to fight with me? Let me finish, come on. Sweet spot, sweet spot, come on. Yeah, we got it, we got it, yeah, oh yeah. Come on, Vader, don't get jealous. All right, your turn. Come on. There you go, folks. We cleaned the base up a little bit. We've pruned the top off, and that's what you've got to do with your fruit trees. So if you want to get a better production in springtime, give them a something prune now, bring them right down, clean out all that upright growth. You don't have to go right in the middle if you're not confident with it yet. You can do that in winter, but definitely get all that growth that's going straight up to the sky. It's useless and you're just going to cause it to get, get thicker branches and become more woody. And when it comes to pruning them, it's going to be a lot harder to maintain. So get out there and prune them, look after your trees, and we'll get into the uh, spraying regime as soon as we hit autumn with our nectarine and peach trees. In the meantime, check out our website, vasilisgarden.com. Everything's heavily discounted. And remember, folks, we are closing the garden centre in Coburg. It's only got another week or so to go before the doors shut forever. If you haven't been down there and you can get, get down there, uh, make an effort down the weekend. So I'll be there myself uh, along with the team and everything's heavily discounted. We've got to clear everything. Citrus trees, fruit trees, seedlings, indoor plants, and obviously all our wonderful range that we carry online as well. Vasilisgarden.com. From me, Vasily. Maresi.